Welcome to the Taillabs Optical LAN Basic Skills Series video, Creating an Optical Power Budget. This video will introduce planning and design principles for the Taillabs Optical LAN system. It will provide instruction on creating an optical power budget that can be used to support the installation and operational phases of the Optical LAN project. The topics covered in this video will be an overview of the PON interface and its requirements, a list of terminology used in fiber power budgeting, instructions on calculating the power budget and expected attenuation, instructions on implementing the power budget during installation, and instructions on using the power budget during system operation. For the Telebs Optical Land system to operate effectively, the PON interface must be installed and maintained appropriately. To do this, Guidelines must be followed to make sure that the PON fiber infrastructure meets the requirements of the transceiver both at the OLT and at the ONT. Before we begin this discussion, it is important that we understand the terminology used when calculating the optical power budget for the system. Launch power is the amplitude or energy of light that leaves the fiber transmitter. The energy level of the launch power is usually measured in decibels relative to 1 milliwatt, or dBm. The Telebs Optical LAN transceiver at the OLT typically transmits 3 to 4 dBm downstream to the ONT. Receive sensitivity is the minimum energy that's required to detect an incoming signal in the fiber receiver. In Optical LAN, the ONT has received sensitivity of negative 27 dBm. The receiver saturation indicates the maximum power input that a receiver can handle before the integrity of the signal is affected. The ONT's maximum receive saturation is negative 8 dBm. The attenuation is the decrease of signal strength during data transmission that is measured in decibels or dB. Expected elements that create attenuation on the fiber span are the splitter, the connection points, and the total fiber distance. The operating range of a data link will look like this figure of bit error rate versus received optical power for a typical fiber optic transceiver. There must be a minimum power at the receiver to provide an acceptable bit error rate. As the power increases, bit error rate increases until the signal becomes so high it overloads the receiver and receiver performance degrades rapidly. The Telebs Panorama EMS provides notification when the BER is at a degrade level or at a failed level. There are also notifications when the receiver power is below the received sensitivity and above the received saturation limit of the ONT. For planning purposes, it is important to have the power budget in mind when developing the Layer 1 plan for the pond span. All data links are limited by the power budget of the link. The power budget is the difference between the launch power of the transmitter and the receive power requirements of the receiver. A margin is added as a pad to the power budget that accounts for incidental attenuation. Downstream and upstream power budgets are very similar. Because upstream signals are subject to slightly higher attenuation over distance, the receive sensitivity limit is expanded to 28 dB of loss. Expected attenuation provides a narrower power budget than the operating range of the PON receiver. Expected attenuation is the sum of all attenuation created by fiber optic splitters, connection points, and fiber length between the OLT and the ONT. The expected attenuation is used as a benchmark for fiber and PON equipment installation as well as ongoing PON maintenance. Unless very long distances are being used in the fiber span, it is usually adequate to calculate expected attenuation downstream. In order to calculate the expected attenuation, we need to know the typical attenuation of the elements of the pond fiber optic structure. The element that creates the most attenuation is the optical splitter. Optical splitters create progressively more attenuation based upon the number of downstream inputs and upstream inputs. 
The chart here provides a good baseline for typical attenuation on the splitters supported by Taleb's optical LAN. For best results, the attenuation specs provided by the splitter manufacturer should be used. The number of connection points in the pond span should also be considered in calculating expected attenuation. Most LC and SC connectors will typically create 0.5 dB of attenuation each. Connection points are typically found at the OLT and ONT transceivers, the splitter, and the fiber optic patch panel. Fiber splice connections are not typically used to calculate expected attenuation as the connection type should create very small loss levels. Fiber distance should also be used to calculate expected attenuation. Fiber distance should be measured as a cumulative distance that signal travels between the OLT and the ONT in kilometers. In PON, typical attenuation downstream is 0.3 dB per kilometer. Upstream, 0.4 dB per kilometer is used. Here's an example of a fiber plan using a 2x32 splitter, 6 connection points, and a full kilometer of fiber between the OLT and the ONT. Downstream, this plan should have 20.3 dB of loss. Upstream, it should have 20.4 dB of loss. This fits within our loss budget of 14 to 28 dB. Of course, if these numbers fell outside of the loss budget, the plan would have to be modified. Once expected attenuation for the plan has been established, these numbers can be used as a basis for validating the installation of both the pond fiber infrastructure and the optical LAN equipment. Using insertion testing, fiber installers can find the actual dB loss of the pond infrastructure installation and check it against the expected attenuation. When the OLT and ONT are deployed, the installer can determine the downstream attenuation by subtracting the launch power at the OLT transceiver from the receive power at the ONT. During operation of the optical LAN system, attenuation can be monitored in the Panorama EMS. OLT launch power is found in the properties of the pond port under the traffic analysis tab. ONT receive power is found in the properties of the ONT under the ONT status tab. Reports of these numbers can be gathered and then compared to the optical installation expected attenuation. If these numbers fall outside of the loss budget, appropriate corrective actions can be taken before the issue creates service affecting high bit error rates. This concludes this video. In it, you have learned an overview of the PON interface and its requirements, a list of terminology used in fiber power budgeting, instructions on calculating the power budget and expected attenuation, instructions on implementing the power budget during installation, and instructions on using the power budget during system operation. Thank you.